We're now going to do one more example of a double integral over a rectangle. Our problem is to find the volume of the solid region bounded by the elliptic paraboloid z equals 1 plus x minus 1 squared plus 4y squared, the planes x equals 3 and y equals 2, and the coordinate planes. So let's first sketch this region to get an idea of what we're supposed to do. So here are the axes. So here's the plane y equals 2, and here's the plane x equals 3, and then we have the paraboloid, so I'm not going to draw a precise sketch. It doesn't really matter exactly what it looks like. The important thing about this paraboloid is that we can see from the equation that z is always positive. In fact, z is always greater than or equal to 1, because it's 1 plus a sum of squares. So the paraboloid is above the xy plane, so we're finding the volume under this um, graph. So the, the sides of our solid region, so on top, we have the paraboloid, z equals 1 plus x minus 1 squared plus 4y squared. On the right, we have the plane, y equals 2. In the front, we have the plane, x equals 3. On the left, we have the plane y equals 0. In back, we have the plane x equals 0. And on the bottom, we have the xy plane, which is where z equals 0. So that's our region. So we're finding the volume under this graph. So that means the volume of the region is the double integral over r of 1 plus x minus 1 squared plus 4y squared dA where r is the rectangle where x goes from 0 to 3 and y goes from 0 to 2. So let's evaluate this double integral. We'll start on the next page. So I've copied the double integral right here. And by Fubini's theorem, I can evaluate this as an integral where y goes from 0 to 3, sorry, x goes from 0 to 3, y goes from 0 to 2, and the integrand is 1 plus x minus 1 squared plus 4y squared. And then I have a dy and a dx. Now previously, we were putting parentheses around the inner integral to indicate that the inner integral is evaluated first and then evaluated in the outer integral. Um, now, in fact, the usual convention is to omit these parentheses. So, this integral sign, together with this differential, d whatever, act as parentheses. So an integral sign is like a left parenthesis, and a differential is like a right parenthesis. So this integral from 0 to 2 is paired with a dy, and those parenthesize this function in between. So you integrate that function over y. And then this outer integral from 0 to 3 is paired with this outer differential dx. And that indicates that you integrate everything in between them over x. So it's really important to put the dy's and the dx in the correct places and in the correct order so you know what you're supposed to integrate over what. Okay, so now let's evaluate the y integral. So I have the integral from 0 to 3, and this y interval, y integral, I treat x as a constant and integrate. So the integral of 1 is y. The integral of x minus 1 squared is x minus 1 squared times y. And the integral of 4y squared is 4, 4 thirds y cubed. And I integrate, sorry, evaluate this expression at y equals 2 and y equals 0. And then whatever I get, I integrate that over x. All right, so let's evaluate. So evaluating y at y equals 2 and y equals 0, I get 2. Evaluating x minus 1 squared at y equals 2 and y equals 0, I get 2 times x minus 1 squared. Evaluating 4 thirds y cubed at y equals 2 and y equals 0, I get 32 over 3. And this depends on x. It has an x in it. And now I integrate this whole thing over x. So the integral with respect to x is 2x plus 2 thirds times x minus 1 cubed plus 32 over 3 
times x, and I evaluate this at x equals 3 and x equals 0. So the 2x at x equals 3 and x equals 0 gives me 6. The 2 thirds x minus 1 cubed at x equals 3 and x equals 0, well I get 2 thirds times 8 plus 1, which is 2 thirds of 9, which is another 6. And then the 32 over 3x gives me 32 over 3 times 3, which is 32. And the total is 44. So we're done. But since I'm paranoid, when possible, I like to solve the same problem using two different methods and make sure I get the same answer, because I tend to make a lot of mistakes. All right, so let's do this another way. So here it is again. So remember that instead of integrating over y first, it's also possible to integrate over x first. So the outer integral is now going to be over y, and it's important to get the correct limits here. y goes from 0 to 2, and x goes from 0 to 3, and then the integrand is the same thing as before, 1 plus x minus 1 squared plus 4y squared dx dy. And again, this integral and this dx act like parentheses. Okay, so now let's evaluate the x integral. So the integral of 1 is x. The integral of x minus 1 squared is x minus 1 cubed over 3. And the integral of 4y squared is 4y squared x. So y is acting like a constant here. I evaluate this at x equals 3 and x equals 0. And then whatever I get, I integrate that over y. So let's do this evaluation. So x evaluated x equals 3 and x equals 0 is just 3. x minus 1 cubed over 3 evaluated at x equals 3 and x equals 0. What's that? Well, I have a third times 8 plus 1, which is 9. So I have another 3. And then the 4y squared x at x equals 3 and x equals 0 gives me 12y squared. So this depends on y. It has a y squared in it. And I integrate this over y. So here I have a 6. So the integral of that is going to be 6y. And here I have 12y squared. So the integral of that is 4y cubed. And I have to evaluate this at y equals 2 and y equals 0. So the 6y gives me 12. And the 4y cubed gives me 4 times 8, which is 32. And again, this adds up to 44. So I got the same answer as before, and I'm happy. Actually, the first time I recorded this video, I messed it up and I didn't get the same answer. So I then had to go back and check where my mistake was, and then, then I got them to agree. All right, so that's the end of this example.